Saturday, November 24th. Quick update. Uh, the truck is finally in the shop. Gave the, the um, Terminator to the local Kenworth on Wednesday. And then I emailed them uh, Friday, just thinking that they're almost done. And they said, oh, it's still outside, but we plan to put it in uh, Saturday. And now they open seven days a week. So I said, so you're going to finish, like you said, before, before the end of the week, so, like Sunday afternoon? They said, yeah, we think so. And, but just to be sure, I, I drove there in the morning today, Saturday. And yeah, sure enough, the truck is still sitting outside. And I attached the uh, unit numbers to the neck because it was um, the temperature was uh, 32F, 0C, so it should be okay. But the metal was so cold, I had some trouble. But I did install uh, the 602 on each side of the neck, so that's my new uh, trailer number. And um, trailer numbers are attached. Yeah, so that was number two I wanted to mention. So trailer numbers are attached. Well, let me see in the mirror. Somehow, you know, I don't like... I look like a, a Russian guerrilla fighter during the World War II. Hold on one second. Actually, speaking about the hair, that might, I feel better like this, but this can be a counterintuitive move. Um, so here's some advice for people that are trying to get lots of subscribers. After carefully considering uh, this, this problem, I found a solution. So basically, in order to have lots of subscribers on YouTube, you need to have two things. You need to have good hair, and if you don't ha have hair, you have to camouflage it somehow. So good hair, lots of hair, and second, you need to have big boobs. And let me tell you my reasoning behind this. I'm watching this girl, right, and she's about, I don't know, 20... 22 years old she started her channel a few months ago about her uh, Ford Mustang GT 350 a $70,000 car at least here in Canada she lives in a house in Arizona and then she kinda like you know like this is nothing she shows two, two more of the cars there's a BMW M something, M3, M5, some kind of a luxury sports car. And then there's a Chevy Z1, I think, a sports car from Chevy, probably another 65, 70 grand. But that's not the point. Like, the point is that she, in a short few months, she, and there's nowhere, like, she mentions, like, a boyfriend, a husband, so I don't know what she does for a living. She never says how he, she managed to get these cars, but... In just a few short months, she have she has over 50,000 subscribers. And I'm only mentioning this because that's how you attract, you attract fans. You need to have lots of hair. You need to have big boobs. So that's like two crowds that are attracted. And then she has not just one vehicle, but she's smart. She doesn't have like three Ford Mustang GT350, right? Because that achieves nothing. She has a GT350 which attracts the Ford crowd and then she has a, a Beamer which attracts the Beamer crowd and then she has the Chevy uh, uh, Z1 which attracts another crowd you know and so there's like five factors right hair boobs and three vehicles 
and that's you know I think that's the recipe you know you need to have a little bit of that and that makes me feel sad about my personal prospects because you know um, unless I do something drastic and plastic maybe <laughs> maybe I will look better my only hope at this department is that this girl has three cars that even after all kinds of um, modifications she cannot beat my Kenworth right so I have two two vehicles I have a Kenworth and I have a Ford Mustang V6 which for some reason because most people don't realize how much fun you can have with just six cylinders so my Mustang gets no respect but the Kenworth is a 605 horsepower 2050 pounds of torque monster and none of her cars come close to it like she comes close in terms of horsepower but torque torque wise it's like total other uh, you know dimension for diesel trucks but so only two vehicles right on my list but what's cool is that uh, since now I, I upgraded to a 60 ton trailer it's a modular trailer and so now in fact I don't have a one vehicle as a trailer I have three I have trailer unit 602 I have flip axle 1 unit 603 and I have flip axle 2 unit 604 so now I have five vehicles right trailer two flip axles Kenworth and Ford Mustang so that gives me some hope you know in terms of my uh, subscribers but all right to continue with our uh, scientific list over here so truck is finally in the shop should be done tomorrow Sunday Uh, trailer unit numbers are attached. Uh, what do I see? What did I wrote here? Oh, case of clean flow. Yeah, and uh, now that it's uh, cold weather is coming, and I already had to replace the fuel filters. If you saw that uh, video, my fuel filters were plugged because I got some high percentage biodiesel in the states, probably from Loves. And especially when it gets cold, like single digits F or below 9 Celsius that's what you need um, you need uh, a good reliable anti-gel and I got a case of this uh, clean flow a Canadian brand which only cost uh, five bucks Canadian or 385 US per one liter bottle just over two um, what is this basically just over two pounds right uh, in weight but it's enough I think one bottle it's enough for two tanks two big tanks Um, it's made uh, over here in Canada but I'm pretty sure you can buy it in the States this is like the best bang for the buck I found so far it works and it's cheap and one more thing I wanted to mention is that mail finally is working here in Canada and as a, when I got back from from US I went to my mailbox and funny uh, that it only took two months for me to get my uh, IFTA statement like when I filed my IFTA fuel tax return I think it was like first week of October because that was uh, second quarter no third quarter yeah third quarter which ended last day of September so I filed it I sent the check first week of October and then usually what happens is that they review your return and they either they either tell you that you owe them more money or they just send or they just say you know balance is zero and they send send you your assessment right and only now I was able to pick up this assessment so you know November end of November and also the other thing I was uh, really anxious to get is my new HUT sticker for New York finally it arrived also after like almost two months uh, and that sticker you have to put it on um, every year because they change the color they change the code so if you don't have that sticker you know you might run into some issues in uh, in uh, in New York and also I received the catalog catalog from B&H photo like which is totally useless to me because uh, last week I, I posted a picture of a photo of uh, new Canadian money Because now we will have ten dollars, which 
you know, not like horizontal, but they have a picture with vertical orientation. There's some kind of a black rights activist uh, female on, over there. They say for the first time in history. But what's funny is that that vertical orientation of the money, you know, like basically to look at the picture, you have to hold the money instead of like this. You have to hold it like this, you know, <laughs> to see the face. On. And I that was kind of like pretty cool. And I posted this on Facebook, and right away somebody said, oh, yeah, and that story, uh, yeah, I didn't post anything of my own opinion. I just said, cool money. And it was a repost of the story in one of our Canadian newspapers saying that Canadians uh, keep changing the look of their money while our neighbor to the south, U.S., is still uses pretty much those founding fathers on each each note right and the design has not changed in uh, like the picture at least the photo has not changed in years and that was just an observation right but right away some American guy writes a comment saying that yeah your money looks cool but you know it it's worth like 70% of our money okay uh, you know true enough if you come here with hundred dollars can US in Canada you will you can go to a bank and they will give you uh, probably 129 Canadian, right? But what's funny is that, and it's really, I noticed this each time our dollar drops, actually, the more it drops, the cheaper our prices in Canada become compared, you know, to the U.S. market. Let's say you want to buy this phone, right? And let's say, I don't know, LG5, right? And you look in, in U.S., let's say the same B&H photo, or Amazon, whatever, and let's say the price will be, I don't know, 500 US, right? And so it'll make sense that since US dollar is so strong, so we take 500 times 1.3, and so this phone should be selling for 650 Canadian, right, in Canada. But you will often see that our prices are pretty much the same as your prices in US, but in Canadian dollars. So this phone will be 500 Canadian, you know? Um, and especially for big items like TVs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, our dollar is cheaper towards Canadian dollar, but I don't know, all imported stuff, for us, it's the same price. You know, let's say I have $1,000, I can buy two of these phones. I have $1,000 Canadian, let's just say, right? I can buy two of these phones, and you have $1,000 US, and you can buy two of these phones in US. And our cars are cheaper, and the reason what prompted this little outcry is that catalog, because I was looking at, you know, Black Friday and stuff like that. I was looking to see if there's any cool deals at uh, local Henry's photography store, henrys.com. And Canon DSLRs are famous for, for because they're, being, they're, they're cheap and they're very good for video. You know, like a lot of guys are using this uh, 70D, 80D, and now they have this tiny little baby Canon, it's called SL2, uh, Sigma Larry 2, SL2. And I look at, at Henry's website, and it says that on Black Friday, you could have bought this camera, SL2, with 18 to 55 millimeter lens, like a cheap lens, but the price in Canadian money was Five, I forget, 579, 599, something like that. And then I look at this catalog, uh, B&H photo, and it's the same price, but in US dollars. Okay, our, our tax is bigger. Our tax is 13%, right? But if you are a professional photographer, you can claim that and you will get that tax back every month, you know? So I don't know. It's not as easy. It's this discrepancy between the currency is not as easy to understand as some people claim oh your dollar is weak you know yeah it's weak in, in US if I go to US that's why I basically when our dollar is weak I stop buying stuff in the States unless it's really I see a deal you know like to give you another example I'm getting eight wheels for free right that was part of this deal with the 60 ton but I gotta pick them up in um, in New Jersey and I was thinking, wait a second, so these guys, they, I asked them, they said they have a tire shop that works with them to do all this stuff, like they can swap, you know, rims, right, on the trailer. And I said, you guys have more rims like this, aluminum, right, because all my rims are steel. 
And he says, yeah, so I said, you know, I'm getting eight free. Maybe I can buy the other eight, and so we can do the swap at the same time, you know. And the guy says, uh, yeah, sure, we can do that. We're using this tire replacement uh, outfit. They come to our yard, and they do everything right there. And so he sends me a bill, and I see that the price for each wheel, I don't know what it was. It probably was uh, Elcoa, you know, they're expensive. But the price for each aluminum wheel was 330 US dollars, 330 bucks, one wheel. I call the local place here, Keltire, and actually this morning, as I was, um, I stopped to look at my truck at the Kenworth dealer, I picked up their catalog with parts, you know, like promotional stuff, and I see wheels again, Accuride, okay, they're not Alcoa, but who cares, you know, it's Accuride, aluminum wheels, my size is 279 Canadian. Now, for those who uh, keep track of the exchange rate, 279 divided by 1.3 is only 214 US. Okay, we, 214, we have to add tax, 27, but because it's a uh, because it's a uh, business purchase I will get it back so for me it's like 214 US you know so much cheaper so I emailed this guy I said I'm sorry it's just I can find it much cheaper in Canada you know and so yeah our dollar is weak compared to your dollar in the States but our prices are much lower you know and just last example our trucks if you're looking for a good deal on a semi truck you gotta buy it in Canada. Just look at the, um, like my truck, right? Okay, the prices keep rising, but my Kenworth with a big engine, double frame, it was 225,000 Canadian, okay? That's about 175 US. You cannot find a truck like that for that price anywhere in the States unless it's used, okay? I don't know why. Our trucks are built in US, right? Then then they bring them across the border into Canada and something happens to the price, you know, like a price because they cannot just keep it just exchange rate based, you know, because otherwise people here wouldn't be able to afford them, right? So they have to bring the price down. And so if I was American, I'm telling you, I would be buying everything in Canada. Like before, I used to buy stuff in the States when the dollar was pretty much on par, you know. But now it's, if you're American, I would buy it here. Anyway, what else do we have here on the, on the menu? Uh, okay, yeah, and so two upgrades. I ordered two upgrades for my Mustang. I was thinking about getting, um, maybe doing this in the future. Like, but they're so expensive, they're superchargers, right? And they're not made here, so I cannot get that cool price. Like I said, in Canada we have cheaper prices, so I have to buy it from US. So for me, it's 30% more expensive in, in my money. Uh, so I was trying to thinking about the supercharger, but right now I'm more occupied with the trailer. And so what I decided to do, I just decided to add the uh, BBK throttle body. And it was it was uh, 35 bucks off because of a Thanksgiving uh, and also I got uh, Roush cold air intake uh, so they're coming to uh, to New York I'm just gonna drive over if I don't find a load uh, next week where usually I cross either Buffalo or Port Huron I'll just drive in my car and, and pick them up I know the uh, the throttle body is arriving uh, Tuesday, and so probably the uh, the Roush is not far behind because I ordered it like one day, uh, you know, difference. Roush was ordered later, and I'll do a video about this because the exhaust, the exhaust note of the car will definitely change. There'll be a bit more power. Uh, so that's what's coming for the Mustang. And the last thing is uh, I wanted to mention is that, uh, uh, yeah, I'm picking up the truck Sunday. And we'll install the um, unit numbers on the, on the flip axles. I have it with me here, but it's still cold, you know. So like I said, I did the unit numbers on the trailer, but I didn't want to do on the flip. 
so that's two two other unit numbers and then I'm gonna bring it back here to Cambridge and then Monday first thing in the morning I'm going to a hydraulic shop because they couldn't do it before without my truck and now I said yeah I'll be there I can move it for you and uh, you know move it inside the shop I said I'll just wait there a couple of hours and they're gonna do a full inspection of the of the hydraulics and also Monday I already talked to them I'm going to Cal Tire uh, because I wanna buy these uh, eight rims from them but they want to look at the at the bolts on the wheels because uh, sometimes when you get when you buy a trailer with all steel rims they put in short bolts and the aluminum rims are wider so especially if you trying to replace let's say your two steel rims with two aluminum rims you need a longer bolts on, on the wheels okay and so I don't know if they can do it um, I think I had to do it on my uh, international before because there's a limit like DOT tells you how much of the bolt should be sticking out you cannot just have like this much outside you know it has to be I think it's an inch or two inches or something like that and so they want to look they said uh, bring the trailer before you buy before you order they have to order them from the warehouse and they said then we'll uh, tell you if this is going to work or not so if the I, I and I forgot to look this morning so if the bolts are too short, then yeah, I definitely want to replace them. I want to get these uh, aluminum rims. So that's what's happening. So um, we'll post another video on Monday. Or some, maybe Monday, yeah, after they're done with the trailer. Maybe I'll show you guys if I install the aluminum rims. I'll show you that. Maybe we'll go over what they did at the hydraulics shop and also uh, one more thing I forgot to say is that I told uh, Kenworth to uh, rip out uh, mud flap hangers those factory ones with those ugly white mud flaps and I said remove them and just add a piece of uh, mud flap at the bottom of my plastic fender and the guy should call me he says hey Sergio this is uh, Ryan working on your truck we have two types of mud flaps one is thirty dollars one is sixty dollars which one would you like? And he just needs one. I said, hey, let's go crazy. Get the $60 one. <laughs> and he says, okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Captain Sergey out.